നമസ്കാരം ജി ഐ യൂണിവേഴ്സിറ്റി ഒഡീഷ ഗുണ്പൂർ റൈറ്റ് ഗുണ്പൂർ സോ ഡോക്ടർ കാളിചരൺ രാത്തിസ് നോൺ ടു മീ ഫോർ മേ ബി ഓവർ എൻ ഇയർ ഓൺ ഗൂഗിൾ പ്ലാറ്റ്ഫോം Zoom, on various programs and I am so glad that I am with the Department of Mechanical Engineering. I, I don't know whether uh, Dr. Kali is very happy that I am a professor of, I was a professor of management. But to this audience that doesn't matter whether I worked in space department or I worked in Prime Minister's office. I think what matters is I am a PhD in fluid mechanics. Okay, sir, okay, sir. So my subject is heat okay. transfer in porous media. Okay, sir, okay, sir, okay, sir. And um, especially radiation was my subject. So I am a heat transfer, basically a heat transfer man. Okay, sir, okay, sir. And I also taught in mechanical engineering departments. Not that I was a professor of management. So I took classes yes, for mechanical engineering. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. <laughs> I also sir. trained in advanced uh, manufacturing technologies sir. Uh, on specialized programs on electronic sir. production systems etc. Yes. This is the biggest technological challenge which students have. If they are not rich enough to, I don't know whether they know the technology well. whether you show your face or not it doesn't make much of a cost affair for you it yes, cost cost you the same the data transfer happens almost the same because if you are able to yes. receive three four people that means you have you have a good internet facility i yes, think yes. mechanical engineering students must know little bit about um, data transfer telecommunication what is happening in the satellite what is happening in ethernet Yes sir, yes sir yes i can give lecture but it doesn't make any sense i could also record it and post it on youtube there are uh, 3000 videos yes. of mine what It's matters to to do, yeah what matters is whether somebody but that shows the culture of the department if they are not yes, showing face uh, in spite of the repeated uh, request that shows how they receive people how do they uh, show their presence etc right i am not happy Sir. with any of these digital programs though i authored a book on multimedia classroom technologies nearly 17 years back okay okay i was propagating digital classes how to interact with with i was ugc academic staff college director so i had a responsibility oh. of teaching yes. teachers in the higher education was my job okay so all the aict ugc affiliated teachers attended many of them attended my classes on various classes but that time i was telling how must uh, how good you can use the digital mechanisms available around the world to augment your classes so yes. probably what is lacking in most of the uh, students why should i say students that is lacking in the faculty faculty because they have not learned artificial intelligence neural networks in space department in my office we had a neural networks research forum probably 30 years back so we had a group of people who um, i am in i am i'm still staying in the department of space quarters because my wife is still with the department of space as director of one of the centers um when we started the department of space probably the center where i am uh, in 1988 89 i was the first director recruitment in this office so we have seen we grow in technology but most of the people don't use the technology to the extent in which it is supposed to be used so that your life becomes more smoother and better uh, including i remember when i was asked to fill up the form 
I still keep a pen and paper with me. I don't know how many students keep like this. Because I keep writing. Whatever thought comes, I keep writing. I may not use PowerPoint. If somebody thought that PowerPoint is uh, international standard, I don't believe that. I still like to be on uh, writing board probably or maybe asking questions and interacting and such things. I teach mathematics also without a board sometimes. Can see my last tenure in one of the private universities here. I taught one one subject which is called uh, campus to corporate. That was the paper which I taught. Campus to corporate. There, what you require is more a logical reasoning, analytical skill, mathematical ability, English comprehension, the communication skill, data analysis, more of statistics. My son is a uh, B.Tech in Mechanical Engineering. Myself and my son joined in same college. I joined as a professor, he joined as a student, same day. I left a little early. He finished his program and then I believe uh, I am a, me a Fluid Mechanics PhD. My wife is also a Fluid Mechanics PhD. My son is a Mechanical Engineer. So I am into this uh, subject of mechanical engineering discussing understanding department of space uses a lot of mechanical engineers all the rocketry systems are mechanical engineering uh, most of the camera gyro systems are electro mechanical uh, computer oriented programs i was doing image processing so i am supposed to take pictures from the satellite and then take and make uh, the topographic maps on the ground so the first set of missions which are used by the traditional people in mapping that is survey of india they are the people who made the maps of india you can see the whole missions were mechanical missions so what do they do is they keep the pictures on two different platforms and through ips you can look at those uh, photographs which are not the regular photographs it's a diapositive what is generally used in the cinema theaters to project and uh, two lights will project through the ips i can see two images and the uh, way in which i see is the left and the right eye as if I am standing on the top of the globe looking on the ground I can see a 3D stereo so we create the two aircrafts flying or maybe two satellites moving in the sky in a small mission there a precise movement of the plate the left plate and right plate that's what it's called the left plate and right plate can go up, tilt accordingly. A small tilt in this, see for example in the aircraft, if it is small tilt, will push you the linear geometry uh, too many uh, kilometers sometime on the ground. So we re recreate the whole thing and the mission which is called stereo plotter. So you can imagine the minute uh, micro level of roll pitchia control which are all mechanical missions no electronics it was done through hands and through the pedals with the legs with a gear sort of a system so it's a high precision mechanical mission which we used in my uh, maybe 30 35 years back why am i saying this after that these precision missions which are mechanical missions were operated by computers through electronic conductors and those precisions were done not with the hands and pedals and then the rotating wheels it is all done through the electronic hydraulic mission so i have seen how a non-electronic non-electrical mechanical mission transforms to a computer scenario so i've gone through last 35 40 years 
how the precision motors works. So these are all great technological challenges which we had. But today what is the technological challenge? I don't know, knowingly or unknowingly, uh, Dr. Kali uh, has given me this topic of technological challenges for mechanical engineers. Right. So I have seen, I have worked, I lived in the technological challenges. So we had a lot of problem. I, I was one person who worked with uh, rotating wheels to uh, do the parameters, measurements, the roll pitch, lifting, the tilt, all that angle measurements, everything I have done, but then transformed into computer system. And then everything was done through digital stereo display. So there was a great transition moving from normal system to a window system. Those days there was no windows available. So I have seen the whole change in this world. I am a basically a mathematician. So my subject is mathematics. But turned into an engineer. My designation in Department of Space is I am an engineer. And what we have done throughout is a technology. Because engineering is an experimentation stage and technology is what is applicable and the use. So in Department of Space we do lot of projects. And every satellite, we don't call it as engineering. Satellite is a technology. That means the engineering part is already over. Rocketry is not an engineering. Rocketry is a technology. That's why we say rocket technology. Satellite technology. So, in mechanical engineering, though the title of the talk says technological challenges in mechanical engineering. I think that's the subject even, right? Or mechanical engineers. It's a, it's a narrow difference between engineering and technology because once you prove the pilot project, yes, I am able to make it happen. I am sure the application will catch and then start using it. So it becomes a technology. The production delay, the production delay in the engineering is not a big deal today because hardware keeps on changing every moment. What is most important, what is, the, uh, what is that is challenging is actually information is the challenging process. I am sure all of us would have changed our uh, mobile phones. That means hardware keeps changing multiple times. But once you buy one hardware, the software inside keeps updating much faster. You keep the same phone, but every app which is used in your cell phone keeps updating much faster that means software update becomes too fast but then the contacts which i stored the number which i stored the addresses which i stored these are informations that did not change so what is my challenge my challenge is how do i transfer my data to the software and as the software update happens how do i make sure there is a smooth transition shashank has to uh, mute his mic it's echoing like yeah thank you so the the challenge is how do i transfer in the information technology is a big challenge suppose if i have got an equipment i measure a lot of things during my experiment and that mission got updated or the software got updated my problem is how do i transfer this data the format, data, extra informations, supplementary informations have to be. So, uh, this is of big demand. Once you can do that, the information technology, the statistics, the computation, all that data analysis, which, we, which people do, it's a big industry today and it's of big demand. And that need to be updated. So, Engineering technology, it is not engineering separate and technology separate today. Especially in mechanical engineering, the difference between the theoretical engineering, the theoretical engineering and engineering technology. I am using the words very carefully. Uh, the mechanical engineering with a lot of information and how do I make this uh, so user friendly, so directly applicable so much of portability 
so much of application so much of feedback how do i make my design perfect so next week i am in one of the engineering colleges to speak about design thinking that's one of my subject expertise so how do you make your design so well it gets adapted to the industry situations much faster so many people have confusion they don't ask a question uh, whether electronics engineering is different from industrial engineering but many people will ask a question is mechanical engineering is different from industrial engineering the question itself is coming because the the parallels or maybe the relationship is much better between mechanical engineering and industrial engineering i remember one of my uh, brother in law who was an industrial engineer working with the bajaj long long back it's almost uh, 1990s earlier 1990s that time there was no industrial engineering as a subject of uh, uh, no specialization in engineering colleges but that was there in part of our uh, defense systems because defense industries were specialized industries now today if you talk about industrial engineering it becomes more of medical industries uh, specialized medical equipments are supported so industrial engineering itself has got lot of branches so what is that commonality and where is it different the the industrial technology used by a doctor in terms of scanning mechanisms analyzing data even if it is taking the pulse that itself is a mechanical system the vibrations are what is recorded so it needs lot of physics lot of mathematics lot of designing and converting them into a technology data analysis data information informatics it becomes see like bioinformatics without mechanical engineering nothing works there so it is programming so the focus becomes more of mathematics operations related to the human applications or human factors which uh, talks about how economic it could be how the operations can happen how the human factors how the ergonomics works how can i optimize it what are the computational methods which i can use a uh, lot of statistics uh, my son is in nuclear physics actually so every uh, we don't know now when i talk about nuclear physics and mechanical engineering a mechanical engineer who was my son turned into a material scientist man now because his mtech was in material science and he did it in um, imperial college london so the material science department when i also went to see the material science department in uh, imperial college so as you enter you will see aircraft you will see huge uh, turbo engines everything you will see in the aerodynamics the rocketry space components everything you will see but you can see uh, my son who graduated from there the masters from that in material science has turned into a chemical engineer today because he is talking about nanotechnology or maybe uh, nuclear physics where the nucleus have to be uh, condensed and then you have to compress it or you have to diffusion or maybe you are you are cutting into pieces so imagine you have to cut an elect- neutron into pieces or maybe get the shape of neutron perfectly well which is suitable for you to pass through a tunnel to bombard it tomorrow the shaping of the neutron is done with a, a knife which is smaller than or sharper than a neutron so it is actually a nanotechnology got it so a lot of experimentation the equipments which are required for you to work in that the other day i was talking to him and asking him uh, the same question when kali gave me this i just asked him what are the challenges he says whatever the drawing uh, on the board what he has done or the the white paper the, the first semester you have the drawings and all that all these are useless actually now yeah you need to show that on the paper once but then the rest of the life has to be on digital so what is the technology challenge today how fast you move from the drawing board which you have the uh, to the cad packages i remember in 1989 when i joined department of space in hyderabad you can imagine hyderabad is one of the most advanced technology center in this country today but 1989 when i joined department of space we never had 
a CAD package training uh, center in Hyderabad. So I went to Bombay to study that. And Bombay, I went and stayed three months to study the AutoCAD related equivalent to that. There was a Microsoft, uh, the micro station. The company was called Indergraph. Indergraph had got a micro station which has got a lot of fluid mechanics and mechanical engineering applications. The CAD CAM in uh, uh, Indergraph uses specialized applications in mapping and also in mechanical engineering. So I remember going from Hyderabad to Bombay to learn CAD packages. And today it's there on everybody's uh, no desktop. Everywhere it's very common. So the world has changed. So the today, if you look at mechanical engineering, when I went to one of the colleges, very recently one of the famous colleges in Kerala, there is an MTech in mechanical engineering sanctioned by AICT. Out of 20 seats, there is only three seats filled. Now, probably one of the reason could be COVID, but not that much of demanding. The reason is what is being dealt in classrooms is not updated to the standard in the industry. But overall, in the overall world, the whole world, if you look at Germany, America, and most of the Boeing companies which are growing in the West, uh, the most of the automobile companies like Ford, etc., etc., even medical companies like uh, uh, Johnson & Johnson or maybe GE electrical companies. Uh, you name even the Tesla which is uh, the going to be the forefront in the all these industries including maybe computer like Dell, Amazon, Apple, Microsoft. I can name many companies like this including 3M or Coca-Cola or Honeybell, Doe. If you look at the number of people getting recruited in those companies out of 100, maybe those companies who are our Fortune 500 companies in the world, out of 136 are mechanical engineering people. Out of 136 are mechanical engineering. Don't think that IT is the, the most demanding. No. There is, there is a saturation in the uh, field. So what is demanding is the mechanical engineering or automobile or industrial engineering people who are updated themselves into the modern technology so that's why i call them as mechanical uh, engineering technology not mechanical engineering and technology separate if you see them separate there is a challenge if you see them together most of the advanced countries it has become mechanical engineering technology they don't distinguish between engineering and technology they have clubbed it together and bulked it together suppose if i talk about the rover or drone or maybe not on the above the space or above the terrestrial uh, area even on the ground look at all the agricultural projects the automation process in the agriculture field without mechanical engineering nothing works every production project every agricultural project every fire and safety or safety and uh, the uh, the emergency requirements all the projects automobile projects everything is mechanical engineering so the current technology the principles the production process the designing the material manufacturing processes the maybe one of the greatest challenge in this world will be material i remember when tesla wanted to do the uh, space programs they went back to Russia and they purchased uh, the aircrafts they purchased rocket components because the materials which they used for such things are more important so mechanical engineering technology mechanical engineers the product engineering technology the designer designers the product development engineering the manufacturing technology I, I was telling while well, the the first two few sentences which I told is I, I I went to many industries around Hyderabad as part of one of my training programs in advanced manufacturing programs there was a uh, program done by one of the uh, consortium of industries together and in which I was one of the participants because of my interest in engineering especially mechanical 
So the mechanical engineering technology which we learned, we have seen how the old lathe machines have been uh, modified by those engineers who are working there day and night, including diploma people, engineering people, put them together their effort and then made into a CNC machine by themselves. A old traditional lathe machine was converted into a CNC machine because the commonality is there. So if you know how to operate the cam, cam the computer aided manufacturing CNC machine, making yourself to make it work is one of the fantastic things. They may not know the, the computational fluid mechanics or maybe the finite element analysis or all that uh, stuff which we learn in the mechanical engineering. If you look at the robotics or the traditional steam engine, aircraft manufacturing to vehicle manufacturing everywhere, the electromechanical computer based technology has taken over the mechanical engineering automation programs. So the hardware including the testing process, the crash test or um, the engine uh, normal test, everything need to be connected to uh, advanced technology so that your parameter computation maybe the test mechanisms gives you a better standard better fastness the failure rate will become less the design can be improved much faster that means you are improving your engineering through the technological parameters i think uh, i spoke almost a half an hour the objective of my discussion is or my deliberation or what i spoke so far is only to give you the trend in which probably the subsequent discussions or question answer could uh, draw you into this direction. That's all what I have to tell. Uh, maybe I, I, I love to have more discussions. I love to have more interactions than the one way uh, sort of a deliberation. So I must thank uh, uh, the department, the university and especially my brother Dr. Kali for uh, introducing me to this platform and then giving me an opportunity to open up my ideas so i'll I, i'm 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 ready to take questions i but i cannot guarantee you that i can give you answers but probably we could think together or maybe somebody could uh, react uh, from your end or maybe i'll come back to you with a uh, answer little later so I, I i wanted to make it very clear that you no know, maybe augmented reality uh, good afternoon uh, good evening sir. Sir, I have one question. Sir, what is the role of CFT in aerospace, sir? Com uh, computational fluid? Yeah, that's a beautiful question. Uh, any any uh, fluid related experimentation which we do, it's all done through um, uh, CFD, the computational fluid dynamics. See, for example, so I was so lucky that you know, my first travel in aircraft was with uh, NAL director. So you can imagine how the aerofoil sectioning, I, I remember the equation name, Minkowski equations which are used for aerofoil sectioning and all that. You know? It needs lot of data to be computed. The flow of um, the flow of air around the wings need to be modeled. What is the mechanism which I can use other than this? It's all computational fluid mechanics. So the large number of data, the junk of data, the flow of data, in fact, it can be called as the flow of data. And that need to be modeled. I can only do it using the computational uh, fluid mechanics. The, um, therefore, you can see the people who are with um, mechanical engineering, especially the fluid flow, not that uh, the fluid flow when you talk about you can understand either the liquid or the gaseous. The whole mechanism becomes so complex, the data becomes so complex, the equations become so complex. 
so most of our problems are dealt only with the cfd modeling it's it's a very evident thing that's why uh, a lot of importance is given for anybody who wanted to do the cfd systems which measures now today there are a lot of equipments which can measure this with the great precision that is even for a nuclear physics most of the modelings are done by measuring it's it's a day to day affair right traditionally one of uh, the simulations which are being done in mechanical engineering they are all the models which are first done and then the experiments were conducted with the measurements and then continue with that see for example assume that not even to rocketry don't have to go to rocketry aerofoil sectioning and all that even in automobile i remember one of my conferences which happened one of the person who was kaloni who is from uh, winsor university canada those days i am talking about something which happened 40 years back he used to come and stay on the road to see how the vehicle carrying more luggage the how the wind goes and about the vehicle it has to go and then give a counter Uh, force you can see the the wings which are kept on the vehicles which are wanted to be speedy running vehicles you know the uh, all, all that is modeled based on the shape of the car is modeled the automobile designing has got lot of computational fluid mechanics components these are all done in the theoretical simulation models first then the section has been implemented to see how well it works so what people have done is they have there are specific even the rocketry to check the thrust what is done is the with the great force the uh, air is pumped to see how much load it can push back right so how do we do this the balancing between the force the thrust the stress what is applied and how much the force it has to uh, maybe if it is to be uh, in a balanced or it needs to be uh, harmonized so the, the, all these computations are done through simulations experimentation and then implement on the ground so cfd is one of the basic starting point in any of the design factors on in including the Uh, vehicle to the rocketry so i don't have to only talk about uh, aerofoil space even in on the road also it is applicable I, i i know that probably you know all the automobile engineering people know that it is not the friction which needs to be manipulated to make your vehicle more uh, no uh, better vehicle it is the air friction which is, which needs to be adjusted so the air friction is more important than the road friction that means your fluid flow is what is stopping it got it so the efficiency of the vehicle depends on the efficiency of the vehicle depends on the drag force uh, lift force in the aircraft but on the road it is the drag force or the which controls the speed not the friction on the road it's a beautiful question i think all the engineers basically should understand this very thoroughly so that oh they know why i am studying this paper if you don't understand the basic reason behind why this is being objective and scope for every study most important is when you take a paper take a chapter look at objective and scope why am i studying it ask keep asking this question why where when why how who is going to use this such question should come to you the lot of w's and few h that is what is essential right thank you sir uh, sir yeah uh, sir uh, what is the principle of cryogenic engine um generally 
when you have to lift something the fuel what we can be used the best way is to use the uh, the best explodable nuclear sort of a thing but the problem with the nuclear is we will not be able to control it because the thrust which can generate is so much and the speed in which it goes is so much we will be not able to control it as we require so what is the next option the next option is the liquid nitrogen or something which is uh, below the zero that can go up to minus 300 minus 500 so when you expose it little bit the pressure in which it which will push out will be much higher so cryogenic is one of the most usable fuel which is in the fluid form where we need not control the controlling require is only in the beginning stage so today we use cryogenic at the end of the stage the third stage fourth stage depends on how many stages you have the last stage where it's already in space you want to give a boost a thrust but what is used in the first and second stage is a porous fluid plus solid together so that it becomes controllable right apart from the thrust which is available on the sides you know you have got uh, smaller ones apart from that in the main combustion engine what is used inside the rocket in the main i don't know how many of you have seen physically the size of the rocket i keep saying you I, i've been to sri harikota where the rocket launching happens all of you can go uh, may not be the time when the rocket launching happens but while the filling happens while the rocket is in the manufacturing stage students are welcome they could go and then see the facility so when it is posted on the height it will be like a 20 feet uh, i mean 20 floor building so 20 floor building you can imagine it's almost uh, uh, 60 to 70 feet high so people work in different floors around it so i have seen how the filling happens how the fuel filling happens and imagine the fuel is so powerful assume you go there and then one maybe from your pocket one one rupee coin falls inside that the whole combustion engine can burst and maybe a sweat which is from your forehead falls inside that is good enough to blast the whole rocket understood so that is such a powerful because any small change in the temperature can make it to blast so every stage in the rocket is manufactured in such a fashion based on how much control i have to give whether i must be able to stop it i must be able to take it the, uh, the slow movement is what is required because in the trajectory motion i am not looking at the rocket to throw it onto the height straight it's always a trajectory motion right so i have to cross only the 140 kilometers of the atmosphere to pump it out from the atmosphere then probably i can use a much powerful bombing like a cryogenic and tomorrow we may use even nuclear okay so that's like a compressed uh, engine in which the fuel at the compressed level uh, generally the nitrogen which is in the much much lower than the temperature of the normal probably it could be 500 degrees celsius or 300 degrees celsius and below that that is what is used uh, sir we uh, would use lubricant for uh, white sun uh, cars for engine cooling yeah uh, in rocket uh, what can we use for engine cooling like engine cooling yes sir yeah actually there is in the rocketry the you need not to cool it because what is done is uh, the in the engine what you pump out is on the normal terrestrial this is in the space so generally what happens is I, I will give you one best example probably you must look at in the internet to see how in case if the rocket fails or maybe something burns what will happen so you can imagine the whole area see we have a Sri Harikota which is uh, generally populated by fishermen and some such people right before the rocket launching happens the whole population is moved out from the village got it the reason is assume that and uh, uh, even if 
in the on when it is on the ground when you start uh, the countdown starts before the zero when the rocket pushes up the burning starts because it has to get a minimum thrust for the lock to be released right so until the minimum pressure is attained until the lock is removed the fuel starts burning and that is why sometimes we understand there is a leakage and things are stopped also abruptly it uh, stops so what happens is during the first burn what will happen to the fire and you can see a big pond around it and the whole thing goes inside water only understood so that is what one of the cooling which happens and the whole water will boil and then burst out actually it's a, it's a beautiful scene but it's likely technologically a challenging job to be done right so don't compare with what happens in the normal cooling system or in the automobile system or in the what is on the road what is on the ground to what is happening in the uh, rocket when it is to be launched and another thing as it goes up the atmosphere is crossed then it is all the coldest place in the world the whole earth is cold right the temperature outside itself is chill and cold so you need not to cool it from externally it is cooled so uh, to protect it from the cold what we have is we have a space application center in ahmedabad where the camera systems the don't think that camera is a small camera eh? the camera is as big as your room the camera is as big as a 10 feet by 10 feet people get go inside the camera <laughs> <laughs> understood the focal length of the camera is 3 meters so uh, one person cannot fill between the lens to the imaging system so in between two three people can sleep actually <laughs> that's like a big bed so this need to be uh, insulated so what we have is a beautiful system of insulation that is not to take care of the temperature which comes from the rocket but it is to take care of the the coldness what is a, what is in the space so imagine the rocket is going to the coldest place and you then compared to the chillness what is in the atmosphere the temperature of the rocket is nothing actually that is why most of the shells of the rocket the rocket shell does not burn that is externally it is chill but you need to be careful manufacturing such uh, uh, material that is why mechanical engineering people turn into ma material science people you need to have a material externally it is too chill and internally it is boiling understood so the material has to be st so strong otherwise it will burst so the material science people have got a great role both in the satellite and the weight has to be too less you cannot make it too heavy because the rocket itself becomes heavier any any small weight added to the rocket will add to the cost of the launching and it will also become much more because when the weight of the rocket increases the fuel has to be more then again the weight increases correct so that is one problem which we have that is why the light material which can sustain any uh, any temperature any atmospheric condition is what is being invented or maybe that is what is supported by most of the people in the world from the private industries to department of space either it is in india or nasa that is why you can see when abdul kalam wanted to have very specific biotechnology applications of material science what can be used for people uh, when they have to have a uh, no the bond surgery what material can be put everything was from department of space it's all technology transfer understood because we need a non-rusting weightless metals to be used inside our body and which are non non metal uh, the gravity should not otherwise if there are a lot of bonds which are uh, replaced by nut and bolt in my body wherever i walk i will start attracting all the metals around me right <laughs> or maybe magnet will catch me i cannot move from that place so i need non metallic metals non magnetic metals so these are all challenging these are all challenging pro problems yeah if you want to call these are all technological challenges <laughs> correct yes, sir, yes. <laughs> it's all technological challenges. see that's why i said i don't i may not have anything but if you ask questions i can tell you all this and you can put them into technological challenges board
See, I'll tell you, I'll tell you, being a mechanical engineer, my son did his master's in Imperial College. And my niece, niece, who is a dentistry, BDS, after that she did her M.Tech in Nanotechnology. Now she is also into the same Imperial Meteorology Department. From my niece, who is now a nanotechnologist with the nanotechnology M.Tech after doctor's job, after being dentistry, BDS. Now in material science department in uh, Imperial College. So you can imagine which are all the branches which goes and merges in material science department. If not, then sir, kindly elaborate the uh, requirement of the mechanical engineering because now everywhere the computer science, computer science is, uh, uh, that is a one kind of flow, right? So it is an, just as an afraidness to all the minds that uh, whether this uh, branch is collapse or it will be go high. So as per your suggestion, what do you think, sir, that uh, how we, the students will be get ready so that they can uh, face the challenge of this uh, particular going on uh, stages and uh, we will get an opportunity, good opportunity in the coming future. No, if you look at uh, uh, the specializations, if you, if you go, uh, there are variety of branches in which you can specialize. So if you don't specialize and if you're only a mechanical engineer as a B.Tech or maybe an M.Tech in the uh, very specialized areas which probably traditionally what was given, probably you cannot stay in the market. So assume that after mechanical engineering you branch out into subjects like artificial intelligence, robotics, informatics and uh, learn all the computational uh, softwares which are See, I don't think a mechanical engineer without a uh, no Python or maybe a software which can be used for all the operational jobs. Or the best thing what could be today what you can do is if you are still in India, you want to be in the global market. Look at all the best universities in the world which are giving different subjects. You can see most of them. In mechanical engineering, there will be 120 courses, not one mechanical engineering alone. The specializations will be nearly 100. I, I, and don't think that it is too expensive to go abroad and study. If you study in the Ivy League universities, probably it will be costly. But I, I, I have got some agency where I have got connection with a few universities in uh, US. Some of the universities which I have chosen to have a partnership or maybe a consultation is only those universities where middle level people can uh, afford not that my students are not in MIT or the best universities in uh, in America they that that cost may be three crores but there are universities where you can have a specialized programs like robotics artificial intelligence after mechanical look at the applications of your subject into that so that you become a fresh postgraduate in that and your demand will exponentially grow right the cost will be probably maybe 10 to 15 lakhs per year say so that means in 30 lakhs you can become a standard person who is fit for the fortune 500 companies anywhere you will pick it up from the campus itself and the return on investment the 30 30 lakhs you pay in one year you can get the salary back that is the that, that is the guarantee which they give you in terms of salary which you get got it so it all depends on where do you get educated how do you update yourself how well maybe your university have a tie up with such universities i when dr kali called me immediately what i have seen is whether there is an airport nearby so that i can fly and come there understood <laughs> so Suppose it, I have to travel 5 hours on road, then I will be slightly reluctant. Got it. So we can have always a tie up where identify a collaboration between such universities where you can have a half masters here, half masters there based on the number of students who are interested to get into such programs. So unless you update your syllabus, unless you update your collaboration, unless you update your practical skills which you can give to your students, the project in which you get uh, uh, you know, interested, 
See, for example, the agriculture field in India is always hot. But we don't see most of the automation which happens. If you are a real mechanical engineer who wanted to know how automation in agriculture happens, just go to YouTube. That's some of my, I mean, my pleasure in uh, spending my busy, uh, in between the busy time, what I plush, uh, generally spend time in the hobby is to look at uh, how the agriculture works in the West. What are all the equipments which they use? You can imagine, assume that there are uh, no, some fruits in the tree which needs to be plucked. They don't even pluck. You have got a machine which goes and then there, they catch the tree soft and then shake it well, branch by branch. And they collect it in a net and then without any hand touch, the whole process happens automatically. I am sure such a beautiful scene to see any mechanical engineer will dream to go to such companies to work and become part of such a uh, no automation program. So you look at how much such how many such applications we can imagine. India is uh, probably one of the country we can boast the road tarring which happened so fast in this country today because of all that automation which happened in the through the mechanical engineering. One of my friend who is a civil engineer is an expert in piling. So you can imagine the piling happens so deep. Otherwise, the tallest building in the world is residing in a desert area where the sand is, no base is not very strong. So you have to create such a base in the sea in the sand and what is the mechanism which we wanted to provide for creating such an infrastructure so transportation digging under the ground the borewell water uh, the digging through the tunnels construction everywhere it's not civil engineering i think the first person who goes is a mechanical engineering person right so and energy systems Probably the geothermal energy all has happened in experiment in the pilot stage, but nothing happened in the on the ground on production stage. So I'm sure the world is looking for people with mechanical engineering. Otherwise, the statistics which I gave you probably a little old, but what is from my memory only I told. It's nearly 35 to 40 percentage of the 500 fortune companies out of 100 people are mechanical engineers. Is it there something else which I have to tell you other than this? But normal mechanical engineering BTEC will not support. Your MTEC in all the old system engineering will not be sufficient. You will have to augment yourself with the artificial intelligence, robotics, informatics, computation, all that business part of that into economics added together so that it becomes part of industrial engineering. That's why I made a comparison. So a mechanical engineer can turn to a industrial engineering partner or maybe it can go tandem hand in hand so that you your hands will become much stronger that's what i suggest so maybe if you are a university autonomous where you have got some freedom you will have to give some add-on courses which can be certified by some of the companies to start with to look at something which is available in the edx and coursera and give them as an extra course so that many people can you know register together and then start sharing you can have a learning system in which you will share together and then work. I remember uh, NIT, Maulana Asad, the National Institute of Technology, the Mechanical Engineering Department, I hosted a program called a Product Planning and Project Management Program, where I went and stayed a few days, organized workshops, made engineering students to dream a big project and create a project out of your department so that all the project the technical project which you do has got a very specific meaningful output which can come from the projects otherwise you are wasting time the department can boast yourself that i have got a very big project and which may end in 10 years time split into pieces and then give those pieces to the students as projects so it need not be an academic project not a theoretical project it can be a practically implementable project in which you can have a combined program with electronics, computer science, mechanical, everybody become partner to that. So you have to be highly innovative. 
you have to be highly productive project oriented uh, program should happen along with the engineering streams during the studies itself then i am sure your students will have big demand thank you so much sir yeah anybody have any you or you want to any discussion with sir always you are welcome if any one of you wanted to discuss any subject wise also dr tps my name is dr tps teachers parents and students tps thermal power station top police service <laughs> okay so you can look at dr tps google take my number 9447437 948 just ask for a google meet anytime i can get into a google meet and then start discussing with this very specific subject any problem you have any project you have any problems you have i wish that you have no problems you are self sufficient by yourself but in case if somebody require me uh, anywhere around i am open to you all of you actually i am only sitting with a paper and pen no <laughs> I, i can just go on talking about because that's that was my research area right and what i am talking is not from the textbook what i am talking is from my experience of meeting people talking to them interacting learning working that's what i did so sir i may request uh, here yeah. from my personal point of view sir kindly suggest some industrial related projects or exactly the research line what we are doing Uh, delivering and we are conducting through the so all india council for technical skill development the centers like uh, atmanirbhar bharat like the project which is the, coming towards the solution of the society uh, i i what that see what i did was when you called me immediately i have seen the locality there i am sure there are a lot of local problems which you can project right, right. i remember one of my student who took a uh, mechanic um, agricultural bitak his project was actually useless but i know him personally so i told him forget about what the department has given what academically you have done i'll give you a project which you can project it yourself and then his idea was he wanted to get admission in iit for his mtech but he was not a great scholar even english was not good i don't mind opening uh, openly telling in the public because i am not revealing his name um when he came to me his english was bad his technical knowledge was bad the project was so horrible which is useless no iit will give him an admission for uh, mtech so i recreated a new project which is applicable which is not very great actually it's a common project which you can pick up from the ground and he got admission in iit and he had great problem he don't know even he don't even follow english so we had big problem in following classrooms but today he is one of the best entrepreneur in the agricultural field in india okay. the five iitns who started living together there i that's why i'm saying no one engineer can become successful you should have a group of people who says yeah we are ready to dedicate ourselves to work such a team is available i will suggest you go and look around your world you will find the problems we have got lot of such innovative i don't know how many of you know uh, the indian national innovation foundation the chairman was the csir head mashelkar look at the name mashelkar he was the man who gave patent to many of the csir scientists i was like a secretary to him when he was in hyderabad he was in iict hyderabad so i am talking about what indian national indian national center for innovation you just type in national innovation there are two one is indian national foundation and then one is called indian national council for innovation council is government part foundation is a trust both are same because both are headed at once upon a time by same person because government can change policy that is why they started a trust together and there is another one called cob web network cob web cob web they connect people together so that i told you one person cannot do so you have a group of people that's why i suggest you as a department you look at a big project 
and submit to see one of the biggest problem in government of india i was part of government of india i was in the cabinet secretary the highest office in the government i i found most of the time the science and technology department or such departments have a big problem we don't have people who will give solutions to normal problems on the ground we only copy from somewhere and they are all looking for a great project not a small amount it must be in terms of crores not a small 6 months project students need only 6 months but as a department you can project a no government is going to fund a 6 months project government will project uh, look up a project for a 4 years so look at large program large problem split it to pieces and then support your students so faculties have a great role to apply for a special there are there are projects available under government of india under dst department of special assistance scheme dsa scheme departmental special assistance these are all your mechanical engineering department can get a departmental special assistance scheme you can have research scholars funding under that i was a ugc dsa research scholar i was under university grants commission departmental special assistance in fluid mechanics when nearly 40 years back so you can i am sure today the funding is much funding is there are lot of funding but people don't know how to apply for funding you need to have a good team of people great planning and with that great planning when you go government will accept you otherwise if it is a very simple thing they will just put you into dustbin they will not look at all this so i think training programs webinars workshops all that should stop look at great large projects so that you can also earn money you can go abroad under that have collaboration with different universities so that's what i was telling there are at least five universities where i can collaborate with the people i am not seeing good departments coming forward and saying yeah we have a team of people we wanted to collaborate we will get all those directors from such universities to come and talk to your students in your campus but i must get convinced yes your department is very good for that right so that is why when you called me immediately i have seen what do we do is we look at your campus we look at which is the airport nearby how do you do this all that matters the culture should be there okay so when the culture is there there are receivers i am sure the giver will come from somewhere in the world so the receiver has to be ready then projects will come that's not a big issue in this world thank you so much sir yeah and specially department of space all the projects there may be more than 500 companies in india which are being fed by department of space alone because every nut and bolt is not made in the department government doesn't make any nut and bolt we only do designing and then part by part spare part by spare part electronics optics mechanical chamber you can imagine the rocket chamber is also made in hyderabad from hyderabad it goes fuel is made somewhere else so it's only fit and fix mix them together that's what is department of space is doing so it's that's why it's a technology department not an engineering department engineering is happening in different systems around the world around india in different places so there is lot of collaboration possible if you are very energetic not in terms of experiments with the webinar and the theoretical practical on the ground so either locally problems around your uh, uh, village or maybe the local city or to the space you have to open up where you want to do